Welcome back. Um, I'm going to now answer a question from um, Mechanics M1, June 2018, International A Level paper. And um, in this question here, we have a car that pulls a trailer along a straight horizontal road using a light and extensible tow bar. It's a tow bar. The mass of the car is m kilograms, so that's unknown. The mass of the trailer is 600 kilograms and the tow bar is horizontal and parallel to the direction of motion. There is a resistance of motion of magnitude 200 newtons acting on the car and a resistance of motion of magnitude 100 newtons acting on the trailer. The driver of the car spots a hazard ahead. Instantly, he reduces the force produced by the engine of the car to zero and applies the brakes of the car. The brakes produce a braking force on the car of magnitude 6,500 newtons and the car and the trailer have a constant deceleration of magnitude 4 meters per second squared. Given that the resistance to the motion of the car and the trailer are unchanged and that the car comes to rest after traveling 40.5 meters from the point where the brakes were applied, find first the thrust in the tow bar while the car is braking. So what's important here is for us to make a very clear diagram based on these words. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw like that's the road. Do that arrow first. There we have like the road. Okay. And we have a car and we have a caravan. Okay, so let's say the car is over here. Sorry, a car and a trailer. So there's a car and there's a there's a trailer. Okay. So here we have the car. And here we have the trailer. Okay, they're moving in this direction. Okay. And they're connected by a tow bar, which is horizontal to the road. Okay. And the mass of the car, so we can say this is mg. We don't know what the mass of the car is. So that the weight of the car is mg. And the weight of the trailer is going to be, where's the trailer? 600. So it's going to be 600 g newtons. That's the weight of the trailer. Okay, so mg newtons and 600 g newtons is the weight. Of course, there's a reaction force, which I don't think we need because we're not dealing with any. They already gave us all the, the resistance. So that's the resistance of the car and the resistance of the trailer. Um, we have the resistance to motion, not the resistance, that's the reaction the car and the reaction of the trailer and then we have here resistance to motion of the car and the trailer are how much and how much 200 on the car so there's 200 newtons acting that way and for the trailer it's 100 newtons acting that way and the driver spots a, <clears throat> a hazard ahead instantly he reduces the force so the engine, there's no, th there's no force, driving force for the engine because he's, he's, um, he's um, applied, he reduces the force to zero. So there's no driving force for the car right now. Okay. But there's a braking force, which is of course acting the opposite direction of the motion of a magnitude 6,500 newtons. So on the car, there's a braking force of 6,500 newtons acting opposite to the direction of motion now this is a tow bar that's connecting it's not the string okay so a tow bar is is a rigid okay it's rigid okay we ignore the weight of the tow bar because it says it's a light and the tension or the thrust the tension or the thrust in the tow bar will be the same all the way through now if <clears throat> the car is moving in this direction okay and you know, as the car is being pulled by the driving force of the engine of the car, then you will say there's a tension in the tow bar. But when you apply the brakes, what's going to happen is the trailer wants to, you know, if, if you apply the brakes and it was a string, the trailer would just smash into the back of the car, right? Because this is not rigid if it's a string. It says a tow bar, the tow bar is rigid and it's going to prevent the trailer from hitting the car. So, of course, there must be a force acting outwards like this which is called the thrust which prevents the trailer and the car from colliding okay that's what the thrust in the tow bar does okay 
So the T or the thrust is going to be acting in order to prevent the trailer and the car from colliding. That's why it's acting out this way. Okay. If it was um, tension in the string, they would, it would act, act in the opposite. With tension in the tow bar, if the car was moving that way, it would be acting in the opposite directions. Okay. The, the trailer would be being pulled by the car and the car would be pulled by the trailer. What's happening is the, th here the, the, th the tow bar is preventing the trailer and the car from colliding so that there's a thrust outwards like this. Okay, so now we have the forces acting upon the trailer and the car all uh, written down. And we want to find the thrust in the tow bar. Now, there's no, uh, we also know that there's a deceleration okay of four meters per second squared so it's basically you know the the deceleration is, is four meters per second squared so that means acceleration is minus four meters per second squared okay so now that's important now if i consider the car if i consider the whole system it's not going to help me okay because if i use f equals ma i don't have the um mass and secondly if I consider the whole system then the thrusts will cancel each other out anyway in this kind of question where you have a connected particles both moving in the same direction okay connected particles moving in the same direction you can consider the thing the whole system as one whole particle and you can consider the separate parts separately but having the same acceleration now if I consider the whole system as a whole thing that won't help me because then the tensions will or the thrusts will cancel each other outside the system. I won't be looking at the thrusts. So I've got to consider either the car alone or either the trailer alone. Now, if I consider the trailer alone, if I consider the car alone, I have an unknown of m the mass. So when I try to use F equals MA, I don't know what M is. And therefore, there will be two things that I don't know. One will be the thrust and one will be the mass of the car. So that won't help me to find what I need to find, which is the thrust in the tow bar. So what I need to do is I need to consider just one part of the system where I know, you know, everything I need. Now, I don't really need to know what this reaction force is because I already know everything about the resistance. So I, don't, I won't have to use this at all. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the fact that I know the forces that I need to know acting on the trailer. So you've got your thrust acting in this direction. You've got your resistance to motion acting in this direction as well. And you know that the mass of this trailer, okay, the mass of the trailer or the, yeah, is 600 uh, kilograms. Okay, so that's all I need to know. And of course, I need to know that the, its acceleration is minus 4 meters per second squared and it's, at, it's moving in this direction. So what we can say is if we take the, the, this side as positive, the way that I've drawn it, Okay, this is positive, I'm taking it, because it's moving in that direction. Then I can say that the resultant force acting on this trailer is going to be um, minus 100 newtons. Okay, oh, sorry, let me just forget the newtons. Minus 100 Okay, that's the, that's the force acting, and minus T Okay, minus T, those are the forces acting, but they're all both acting opposite to the direction of motion, is equal to the mass times acceleration, which is 600 times minus 4. Okay, so we can say minus 100 minus T is equal to minus 2400. So your T is going to be 2400 minus 100. You have to add 2,400 to both sides, and you have to add T to both sides. So you end up with T equals 2,300 Newtons. So that's the answer to part A. That's the answer to part A. Okay, now part B, they're telling us to find the value of M. Okay, the value of M. Now M is the mass of the car. Now, once we found what T is, okay, I know what T is, this 200 is down there, that's the resistance to motion. Once I know what the thrust is, I can now work out what M is, because the only thing I don't know that I need from here is M. So we basically got this, the situation where we have the car, 
Okay, and we have the thrust and the toe bar acting in this direction. We have the resistance to motion acting in this direction. And we also have the braking. Let me just put this down here. We also have, oops. Just, this is the thrust. And we also have the the braking force, which is 6,500 newtons, 6,500 okay, newtons acting in that direction. Okay, acting in that direction. And we, we want to find the mass of the car. Okay, we know that it's moving in this direction and that its acceleration is minus 4 meters per second squared. Okay, so we can say here that the, the resultant force acting, we can use F equals MA, so the resultant force acting is T, the thrust is acting in this direction here, okay, the thrust is acting in this direction, but the resistance, the, the, um, the, the braking force is acting in the opposite direction, which is 6,500, so is the resistance to motion, 200, and this is equal to M, which I have to find, times the acceleration, which is minus 4. Okay, so you have T minus 6,000, uh, 700 is equal to minus 4m. Now we know that T is 2300. We know that from the first part of the question. It's the same thrust throughout the whole system. Okay, through the tow bar because it's an extensor. So we have, uh, the only thing we don't know is our M. So we're going to have 6700 minus 2300, which is 4400. So 4,400 equals minus 4m. This is minus 4,400, by the way. And when you divide by minus 4, you can say that m is equal to, of course, positive 1,100 and it's kilograms. So m is equal to 1,100 kilograms. That's the mass of the car. Okay, so we can say the mass of the car is 1,100 kilograms. All right, now for part C. Um, here we have the, to find the time it takes for the car to stop after the brakes are applied. Now, let's set up our SUVAT equation because it's constant acceleration here, or deceleration, which is minus 4 meters per second squared. And we know that it traveled, as the question told us, um, 40.5 meters from the point where the brakes were applied. So it's 40.5 meters while that acceleration was acting. Okay, and the initial speed we don't know, the final speed is zero, and the time we have to find. Okay, so what equation of motion can we use which involves S and V and A and T? Okay, one of them is S equals V T minus a half A T squared. Okay, one of them is vt minus a half a t squared there's one of them which uses initial velocities ut plus a half a t squared but we want to use this one because we know the final velocity so we have 40.5 equals v which is zero times t which we have to find minus a half times a which is minus four times t squared so 40.5 is equal to um, that's going to be 2t squared. So t squared is equal to um, 40.5 divided by 2, which is 20.25. So t is equal to the square root of 20.25. So of course it can only be positive. So t is equal to the square root of 20.25, which is 9 over 2 which is 4.5 seconds. That's 4.5 seconds. That's how long it takes the car to stop. And that's part C done. Okay, so here we have finished that question. So the important thing about this question is to realize that these are connected particles. So you can treat them as one whole particle as we did in this last part. We treated the whole thing as one whole thing, okay, with one acceleration, all right? And we can think of them as separate parts as well. So for us to be find out the the thrust okay in the in this rod we 
consider the trailer alone because we had everything we needed apart from the thrust. That was the only thing we didn't know that we needed. Okay, and um, when we wanted to find and the mass of the car, we then consider the car on its own without considering the trailer. We just looked at the forces acting on the car alone. Okay, and therefore, because we already found the thrust, the only thing we didn't know then was the mass. Okay, so when you have connected particles moving in the same direction, okay, then this is what you can do. Consider each part of them separately when you're dealing with these type of questions.